Peters dominated the show scene for many years, and he was also an accomplished handler of several... We come now to the first of our groups the here at Crufts 2024. Ashton it's time to find out who will represent the utility group in Best in Show this Sunday. And we couldn't have a better judge for this. Famous judge about to enter the ring, Dave Killerly, famous for his Red Red Witch Akita, 40 UK champions bred. He's also shown Bulldogs and Rottweilers, a real dog man. This year we had 2,587 dogs competing in the utility group and we will see 27 best of breed winners for David to go over. Tom Mather, the chairman of the Crufts Committee, introducing him into the ring. And now, please welcome the first of our Crufts Best of Breeds, the Akita. And in comes the Akita. Now we have our Best of Breed Boston Terrier. Quickly Terrier. followed by the Best of Breed of our Boston Terriers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our best of breed bulldog. Here's the bulldog coming through from a huge entry today. Just 17 months old. Here we have our best now, In comparison bulldog. to the bulldog entry, there were only five of these at Kenan Dog. That's the uh, very primitive dogs. And now we welcome our best of breed Chow Chow. And here's the Chow Chow. Brisk action coming in. Next in, it's our best of breed. The Dalmatian. biggest entry in the utility group this year, the Dalmatian. And now we have our best of breed Eurasia. And here's the Eurasia, developed in Germany. Now into the ring, we have our best of breed. A breed that has French surged bulldog. in popularity in recent years. This is our French Bulldog. Last year topped the entry, but not, not this year. Dalmatians have overtaken it. Here's the first of the German Spitz, the Klein, the smaller version. And now the German Spitz. Followed by the slightly larger version. This is the Mittel. Same features, larger size. Now we have our best breed, Japanese Kita Inu. Oh, very striking. The brilliant red and white of this Akita Inu. Followed by a similar style dog in a smaller package, our Japanese Shiba Inu here. And our Japanese Spitz. And here's my best of breed winner from the Japanese Spitz ring. Very smart, very correct dog. Now please welcome our best of breed Kazon. The Kazon here, there were 67 of them entered today. And winning the first challenge certificate on offer in this country, the Koika Honji, little Dutch breed. Now we have our Laza Apso. Our Laza Apso here, 123 of them entered today. And this is a very famous, uh, well, a big, big winner abroad. Our miniature Schnauzer. So we saw Maggie become runner-up in the Junior Warrant final. This is her father, Manny. First of our poodles, it's the miniature poodle. The miniature poodle here, the middle size of poodles here, light lifting action. And now we have the standard poodle. Quickly followed by the standard poodle there, a real cheer for this one. A famous dog, famous handler. And here's the smaller size of them, the toy poodle. Next we have our skipperkey. Another of the spitz type dog here, this is the skipperkey. Barge dog. From Belgium. And our best of breed Schnauzer. The standard size of Schnauzer, German breed, this wiry top to coat. And then the Sarpe here coming into the ring. There were 39 of them entered this year. And now we have the Shih Tzu. Ah, uh, here's the arrogant carriage of the Shih Tzu, gold and white. Our best of breed Tibetan followed by our best of breed from the Tibetan Spaniels. Lovely breed. And the best of breed Tibetan Terrier. 
all the way from America, this famous Tibetan terrier. Best to breed here at Crofts on a first visit. And then representing the import register, we have the Jolo It's Quintly. Very good, Jolo It's Quintly, this Aztec breed, yes. That pronunciation could have gone either way, Frank. <laughs> I'm glad it went the right way. <laughs> So our judge going to take an initial look at the lineup here. Now, what he's taking in here is he's seen the dogs move across. He's, some might have taken his eye. He's now looking round the ring, taking in their outline and balance. That's usually the first indication of good breed type, that they're the right shape for the breed and that they have the right proportions. And for anyone who's just joining us, our judge is looking at each breed individually compared to the perfect example of that breed, isn't he? Against the speed standard, yes. Just taking his time. You know, the utility breeds are you know, a very diverse collection. Many of them were bred initially for a job, but they have become redundant as society changed. Utility literally means fitness for a function, but they've all got a different one. <laughs> So, and the first dog for our judge, Mr. Dave Pillier, to examine is the Akita. Arlene Fleur was the breed judge today. Here we have the largest breed in the group, the Akita, developed in its current form in America. We're looking for a large, powerful and alert dog, but it should still be agile. Classic Spitz features here. Now, Dave, going over the dog, he and his wife have bred this breed, 40 English champions, their bloodlines are renowned all over the world. So he'll be looking at this with a specialist eye. They are the biggest of the utility breeds, but they should also, as you say, be athletic, strong, substantial, and be able to move. This is Rudy, a three-year-old dog from Italy. The Japanese breeds prize brilliant, bright colours in their breeds. Our best of breed, Akita, there. Round he goes. Let's hear it for the Akita. Set through to the group by Arlene Floor, number 39. Now, on the... Now on the table, the Boston Terrier, a native breed of America. At one stage, you sat live in Boston before you could be a member of the Boston Terrier Club. Smart as paint. It's got bulldog in its ancestry, so it has the shorter face, strong skull, and these vivid markings. This one is a four-year-old female called Violet come down from Glasgow to compete. Described as comical wild and the boss of the house. Uh, although they, they have some substance, they also have to have elegance with a good length of leg. These Boston markings, the white color, the white blaze on the face and the white legs. Make it a real Yankee doodle dandy. Should be easy, graceful and sure-footed on the move, the Boston Terrier. The Boston Terrier has been the official mascot of Boston University for nearly 100 years. Ladies and gentlemen, the best breed win Boston Terrier number 125. There were 197 Bulldogs entered here today, and this is an iconic British breed, originally bred for bull baiting, but when that was made illegal, the breed was regenerated by an interest in showing. And you'll see here, they're shown with their head and front facing toward the judge. And apart from winning best of breed today, the Bulldog is a category three breed, which means that he's had the award confirmed by a veterinary ex uh, examination after the breed judging. And he will have looked to see that he has no exaggerated features in it. Um, 
They we're avoiding overnose wrinkle. We're wanting large nostrils, and we're wanting nothing exaggerated at all. This is a young dog, just 17 months old, from the Czech Republic, and we actually have more overseas entries this year than ever before. This broad chest, sturdy bone, and this one got a very good tail. And the correct top line for the breed. The movement here is short, quick steps, isn't it? Almost skimming the ground. And our judge has had a lot of experience. He's shown bulldogs himself and bred them. The sour mug expression of the breed, a real sour face, yes. Now here's the Canaan dog, only half a dozen of them here today. They are a very primitive breed from Israel. They were used by the armed forces. Very wary with strangers, very good guard dogs. Now these were developed as the national breed of Israel, but by some Jewish dog experts who had to flee Austria in the Second World War. And this one, Cyrus, happy and exuberant. Well, it's uh, not so. It's not exuberant. Here. It's very typical in temperament. Just a bit wary of the judge, but now getting his act together, light on its feet, carrying its tail well come in a variety of colours, they have to be hardy to exist in rough terrain and harsh climate. And we're looking for an energetic natural trot there, nothing over exaggerated about this dog. Ladies and gentlemen, your best degree when you pay them dog number 375. The lion-like appearance here of the Chow Chow. There were 96 of them entered today. And this is a breed that originated in China more than 2,000 years ago. They've been used for hunting and as guard dogs. And we might just see there the unique black tongue and gums as the dog's panting. Yes, the this looks very impressive. It's sturdily boned, compact, this tail carried high over its back. The Chow Chow has a typical, a, a very special action. It's, it's not a long striding action. It's a moderate rear angulation, which gives it a unique action. Here, strong head and muzzle, clean eyes and these neat little ears. This one is a two-year-old female called Seb, here from Wales, and a previous Group 2 winner, so can she go one better today? And the movement of these is unique as well, isn't it, Frank? Uh, yes, from, from that uh, moderate angulation in the rear, they have a rather stilted action in the rear. You can see that there. The is Very good action to coming towards us. Sturdy and sound. Now, from the largest entry in the utility group, the Dalmatian, it's beaten 20, 222 other Dalmatians to get here. What a day for that. A region, from the Regency period where it was used as a carriage dog, trotting alongside the handsome carriages, the horse-drawn carriages, and at night they used to guard the stables. Now this is a female, just 20 months old, topping that entry. She's called Sapphire, a former Dalmatian puppy of the year, and described as exuberant. This one is a black spotted, they also come in liver spotted. Now quite young but coming from a very successful breeder one of the great things about the Dalmatians is that they have to have this great elegant stride going alongside the carriages it had to be too big they had to be go under the chassis if, if uh, necessary and in terms of the spots Frank is there an ideal size for those well they shouldn't run together you know they, they want them perhaps the size of a 50 pence piece something like that and there should be clear white background no little freckles amongst the the, the white background the Regency carriage dog
Here we have our Eurasia breast of breed. A typical spitz here in outline. We've got that wedge-shaped head, the distinctive furrow there on the brow. And this is a dog that should be really unexaggerated. The name, as you may have guessed, simply means combination between European and Asian influences. And again, it's, it's inherited some of the characteristics of its parents, the, the Chow Chow and the German Spitz. We see the wedge-shaped head, the harsh, off-standing coat, and the brisk action. This one is a four-year-old dog called Logie from Derbyshire. It's thought also that the Samoyed is in its background, and we see the similarity there in that Spitz type. Although this one lives in Derbyshire, it's been abroad and one had lots of success in Europe. So well done you. Well. And now on the table, the French Bulldog. Very big entry of them today, 242. And here's our winner, this little brindle dog. Smaller than the English Bulldog, it's thought that the breed was taken by lace makers to Belgium and developed in the Low Countries and in France to become the French Bulldog. Those bat-like ears that we see there, unlike any other breed, and give it a clownish appearance. And it's seen a huge rise in popularity. The registrations have gone up more than 10 times since 2009. And it's almost a victim of its, its success, isn't it, Frank? A victim of its own success, because in the, in the pandemic, in the lockdown, there were many, many puppies bred when people wanted to own them. And so the, it became overpopulated with some unscrupulous breeding. Um, without taking much heed of health testing and with some new colours being introduced into the breed. Um, so they became, as you say, a victim of its own popularity. Our judge here looking for a compact, sturdy dog. It should have good bone and a really it's kind of square head when we're looking at it with those ears. This one is a best in show winner, had great success. Uh, the judge today, uh, Miss Singh, uh, uh, stepping in, a replacement judge, but had a very good entry, and here's her best degree winner. The smaller of our German spits here, this is our Klein Best of Breed winner. Queen Victoria showed one of these at the first ever Crufts in London, and they're descended from larger spitz dogs that were bought from Scandinavia by Vikings. We'll see the larger version in a moment. Our judge just going over. It's important in these coated dogs that the judge gets the hands on and feels under the coat to feel the the structure of the dog, the good good bone, the correct shoulders of the breed, very important for the movement. They've got good rib cage and chest for heart and lung room. It's not just a superficial beauty show, it's about anatomy and movement. And here, very brisk, typical action of the German Spitz, that wedge-shaped head again, the tail carried high above its back. And this is the ancestor of the Pomeranian, which we'll see in the toy group a little bit later, isn't it? That rough around the neck there, another key feature. Yes, and uh, Queen Victor. This one is George, a six-year-old dog. And very, very playful. Their small size and moderate exercise needs make them an excellent pet for those wanting a more diminutive canine companion. That's our best. Okay, and the middle, the, the larger size now on the table. Same standard, they share the same standard, but this is bigger. They could be measured in the ring at some shows. They're not at Crufts. But this one is the larger, the middle. Same wedge shaped head. Absolutely everything the same features, the wedge head, bone, off-standing coat and the high set tail. And we can see there that the rough around the neck almost balance out by the tail when we're looking at it and those small triangular ears should be set high and you can see there when the dog's alert they're pricked straight up. 
the German Spitz breeds are thought to be descendants of This one is Norman. Dogs He's a five year old dog. Down from uh, Kent, or up from Kent today to, to perform. And they're a, a very collectible breed. You usually find that uh, German Spitz owners don't just have one, they have half a dozen because they're really social and get on very well together. Great characters, very lively, and highly intelligent. Norman's described as very loving, Mr. Dependable, and an all round Mr. Nice Guy. It sounds like a dating advert, that one, doesn't it? <laughs> Our best of breed from the Watson, German Spitz Mittel Bear. Alert and active little dogs. Initially led to their being highly valued on farms as well as as watchdogs. Ladies and gentlemen, your best of breed winning German Spitz Mittel. Dignified, composed, and with a courageous character is how we describe the Japanese Akita Inu. Now, this breed was separated from the larger American Akita in 2006, and it's remained remarkably unchanged for centuries. It has that spitz type that we've seen with the erect ears, the wedge shaped head, and that tightly curled tail. And this one really took my eye when it came in. First of all, it has the brilliant colours that the Japanese breeds are famed for. This bright red with the Urojiro markings, these white markings on the chest, the inside of the legs, some on the face and the cheeks. This, as you say, is the perhaps very close to the original Akita. The one we saw earlier was developed in America to be heavier, but this is the hunting type of dog they would have had in Japan. This one is a big international winner. Over from Spain today, Kichi, a four-year-old dog, has won multiple best in shows across Europe. And striding out very well. It's a breed where they're sometimes a little bit weak in the back ends, but this one is really using its hocks well holding itself together and of course Dave Killerly as an Akita specialist will be sort of looking at this and thinking yes that's very smart. I think this one's caught Frank's eye. Now another of the Japanese breeds, the Japanese Shiba Inu. It means small dog, and this was a, it was a hunting dog and used to go after small game and birds. Should be athletic, quite lightly built, but again, many of the same features of the Akita we've just seen. It's the National Monument Dog of Japan. And after the First World War, there were three varieties of this breed and they dwindled in numbers. They had to be combined to create what we see here today. We're looking at that head there that's like a blunt triangle when we look at it from above. However, and uh, they should stride out, they should have an athletic gait, the, the standard as for an athletic gait, they should stride out with confidence. This one, a black and tan, it's a, a, this lovely plushness of the top coat, neat ears and beautiful eyes and expression. This one looks a young dog. It is indeed. This is a two and a half year old female called Rena, here from Scotland. And it's quick, light movement. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's your best of breed, Shiba Inu, exhibit number 1075. We now turn our attention to the the contrasting crisp white coat and black pigment here of our best of breed Japanese Spitz, judged by none other than Frank Kane today. This is a six-year-old dog called Max, and we're looking for that profuse white standoff coat and a really well-plumed tail that you can see there. Our judge just putting it up over the back where it should be carried. The Japanese Spitz was developed in Japan in the 1930s. And showing the lovely black pigmentation of the nose and the eye rims, this oval eye. This dog it really impressed me. He's so correct to the breed standard. Wedge-shaped head, the harsh top coat. He's got good leg length. That's very important. And strong bone. They haven't to be toyish. So, and again, getting his act together. Now, he looked a bit unsure when he came into the ring. Now he's carrying himself well. Lovely tail carriage over the back. 
a picture of balance and breed type. They should be light and nimble and active on the move, and we'll see that there as he moves out with that really brisk stride. And we see why there might be some Samoid in the ancestry of this breed as he goes around there. Now here is the Kiesond, a Dutch barge dog developed by the Dutch politician Kies de Geisler, who was leader of the Dutch Patriot Party, so it became something of a political mascot in its own country. This shades of grey and a crisp, off-standing top coat. I met a group of Kays Hond earlier on Discover Dogs, and those spectacle markings on their face are really unique, aren't they? Yes, it's a fine line drawn from the outer corner of the eye up towards the ear, so they look like spectacles. This one is a six-year-old dog called Teddy from Cornwall, winning his eighth challenge certificate today and described as a lovable idiot. Right, they were used as guard dogs on the barges. They are quite vociferous, so when you said you met a group of them, it could have been a noisy affair. But uh, coming in shades of grey, spectacle markings and also the harness markings over the shoulder. You see them running down from the shoulder there. They're called harness markings. Again... Um, enjoying his time here. They should be clean, brisk and straight on the move with that tail carried up over the back. And, and you can the see there the large ruff around the neck. The breed went out of fashion and the population declined dramatically until a few breeders made a concerted effort with the remaining dogs left. Ladies and gentlemen, the best of breed winning Kazon. Making one, history two, today, three, we have our best of breed, Kuika Honje. Now, this breed had and challenge certificates for the first time at Crufts 2024. It's a Dutch day. breed that was used by hunters to lure ducks into nets using its white plumed tail. It was originally in the gun dog group here, but it was moved because it never worked alongside hunters with guns. Yes. From an entry of 42 a decoy breed. The orange coat is said to be symbolic of the House of Orange, the ruling dynasty of the, ne the Netherlands. And it's got these little black earrings on the ears, ends of the ears with tipped with black, a prized feature. Now, this is the first veteran we've seen here. So, in dog showing over seven, and you're a veteran, this is a female called Inca, and she is eight years old. She's won 12 best of breeds before, but first CC, as I said today. So, they've, they've although they've been shown at Crufts before they'd never have championship status so they need three cc's to make a champion and this one has won its first one today now on the table the Laza Apso breed which comes from Tibet where they were kept as companions for monks in their isolated monasteries. They're credited with spiritual powers and it was thought to, to bring good luck and prosperity to the owners. This one, a multiple champion called Haru, a dog, over from Lithuania and just two and a half years old. Now, owner says he loves to be in the spotlight, the sweetest and most mischievous dog at the same time. So look out for trouble when we start moving. This, this has a very nice outline, correct proportions, correct in the neck and top line. Profuse coat, but under that profuse coat there has to be a dog which was hardy enough to withstand the extremes of climate. They should be, as you said, really balanced, sturdy once you get your hands under that coat. Slightly longer than they are high. And the movement free and jaunty is how it's described in and, the standard. And the coat should have a sort of fairly hard texture. It's not a soft, silky coat. It should be quite hard. Is this a double layered coat? It's got a softer undercoat, yes. There's our Laza. Remember Dougal from the Magic Roundabout? Modelled on this breed, the Laza Apso. Resolute expression. Number 
the distinctive beard, moustache and eyebrows here of the miniature schnauzer best of breed. This is Manny, a former top dog. He's still only four years old. There were 132 of them entered today and he's the smallest of the historic schnauzer breeds dating back to the 14th century. They're compact, short backed, but with a lot of substance. They should not be terry like. They have to have big ribs and a good forechest, and the judge just feeling the harsh top coat got a softer undercoat. This one known as pepper and salt with the shades of grey coat. So owned by Becky and Lauren Woods from Taunton and we're actually going to be showing some footage of some Manny puppies on Saturday on the show with Claire. So very successful kennel, they've had a lot of good winners and winning today from 132 so that's a, a great day for them. Movement here should be vigorous and balanced, you're looking for good reach from the front legs and then drive from behind as well. The word schnauzer means whiskered snout, and we see this little beard on its foreface. High set tail, holding its top line very well. It's a sign of good balance and good construction. Now, as a breed, these don't molt, so they do have to be hand-stripped to keep them looking at their best. Our best of breed there, Manny, the miniature schnauzer. Now the very elegant outline of the miniature poodle, that short back, long neck, great carriage. The poodle was developed in, Germ came from Germany and was developed in France, hence it got the name French poodle. This one is a six-year-old dog called Cirrus Black. Now, lives in Kent, but has been in California and been shown in the US for the last year. Judge going under the coat, feeling the construction. Very cleverly named. It's called Jato Clarion Collusion. And that's clever because it's a, it's a mix of American with English bloodlines to get a collusion to produce this. So in terms of size, this is our middle option, isn't it, If you, when you come to the, your three poodles? Yes, and this, this, this lion trim it has here, when she comes out from behind the table, there we are. <laughs> this big mane of hair over the forequarters. This is a functional clip because the poodles were originally duck retrievers and they clipped the hindquarters and gave it a lot of coat in the front to give it buoyancy in the water. So it's not just a fancy hairdo. And the, the joints, the hocks, and the pastons are protected by these pom-poms, protecting them from knocks or from the cold water. And the ones on the back, is that the kidneys or an organ? Yeah, they're, 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 there's well. the little pom-poms on the haunches, yeah. yes. Yeah. When breeding numbers are much greater than they are today, it is no surprise... The first of our poodle, first best of breeds there. figures of the time were photographed with their poodle. Happens to be wherever you are. This is the best of breed winning miniature poodle number 1617. Now we move on to the largest of the two sizes. Showmanship personified. That is the Fresh standard poodle for you. The second of the poodles we'll be seeing tonight. This is a big winner. Over from um, America, where he became a champion, a four year old dog called Boomer. He's won at Westminster Show, at the World Dog Show. He's a really big one to watch tonight. Our judge just looking at the dentition, that's very important, and the underjaw, they need some chin. Now, it's, this is the largest of the poodle sizes, and this was the original duck hunter. Strong, powerful, hugely intelligent. The judge just feeling the texture of the coat. That should be wiry. Running down to see its muscle tone on its back legs. And they really should be in absolute peak muscular condition here, which we'll see as they start to move. Those thighs should move neither in or out as the dog powers from behind. And the tail in this instance should be carried up and proud. Now, the always the consummate show dog the pool and he's got a very good handler jason lynn 
regular viewers of Crofts might remember him winning Best in Show with a Black Standard Poodle some years ago. They've had great success with this and with American Cockers. Standard. There were 167 of the standards here today. There's a lot of work goes into that, but when it comes out looking like this, it's spectacular and well worth all the effort. Now on the table, the smallest of our poodle varieties, the toy poodle, and again, another black one. Uh, again, one of the great challenges is to get all the same features in a scaled-down size. This is Yo-Yo, a three-year-old female from Florida over today. Big winner in America, described as a very cheeky personality. And apparently she likes to have a puppuccino at Starbucks. I'm not sure we do that in the UK. <laughs> now, also comes with a famous handler from America, Christian Manny Lupulus, very famous for his poodles in America. Just getting his instructions for movement. And poodles are non-shedding, aren't they, Frank? So they do need an awful lot of upkeep to keep them looking as good as they do in the ring. Yes, and you can imagine why so many people have them cut down into pet trims. However, this one won the, its variety best toy at the Poodle Club of America, which is the Blue Ribbon Show for poodles in the States. So despite its compact size, you've still got the deep chest, the well-muscled hindquarters, and we're looking there for a light mover with plenty of drive, which I think we can say tick and tick, can't we? Very alert, hugely intelligent dogs. They thrive on human company and enjoy nothing more than play. They are great at most dog sports too. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your Best of Breeds Toy Poodle, number 1886. A little blonde firecracker is how the owner of our best of breed, Skipper Key, describes her. Another Spitz type dog here. The name literally translates to little skipper or little boatman, and the breed was developed to help keep down vermin on Belgian barges. And it's uh, something quite unusual to see a coloured one winning. Often we see the black ones winning. Here it's called Going for Gold, and today it achieved. It. Yes, that's great success for a coloured one here. So, again, a spitz breed, and uh, they should have a special coat pattern of a ruff over the neck and shoulders, what they call a jabot down its front, and a harsh textures running along the back. Similar in a lot of features to the middle and Klein of the German Spitz that we saw earlier, aren't they? Yes. I, I would say that this doesn't look as though it's in its fullest coat today, but it's uh, full of breed qualities in the head, the shape of the body, and the proportions, and this brisk stride. They were originally docked here. They're now shown with full tails, although some of them have natural bobtails, but this one is a full tail here. And here is the Schnauzer, another German breed, and it's thought that goes back to the 14th century and it was used in Germany for keeping down vermin, for herding livestock and pulling small carts on the farm. This one is Baxter, a two-year-old dog from Somerset and a former top schnauzer, winner and top puppy. Apparently everybody is his friend. You can almost feel that wire coat from here. It looks so wiry and crisp. Banded shades of grey, very arrogant. Looking at the judge, are you looking at me? He's saying this long, clean head, clean striding action. And we describe them as almost square when they're stood because they should be about as tall as the length of their back. That's right. Beautiful top line and tail set. The creek was developed as a vermin killer, but proved its versatility by herding livestock and was also used for pulling small carts. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your best of breed winning schnauzer, number 2032. Two-year-old Dotty topped our entry of 39 Sar Pei. The breed name literally means harsh, sandy coat, and he was developed as a Chinese breed for fighting and hunting. Today, we're looking for a dog that is not exaggerated in any way. And this one, a, beaut a beautiful example of the breed. And it's very good to see that it's free of all exaggerations. When the breed first came into the country, many of them were over-wrinkled, and this caused too much skin, causes many faults, including weak, bad eye rims, eye infections, and skin infections. Now they've cut them down, only a few uh, wrinkles over the withers at the root of the tail. They're much fitter and healthier th than they were in the 1960s. As with the Chow, this is another breed that has the bluish black tinge on the tongue and the gums. It's thought that their DNA is very closely related to the Chow, yes. And very nice to see a very young handler here handling her pet. Um, Lupang's back in business. She is a group winner already, a remarkable achievement for the breed and for this young handler. And at only two years of age, already has 15 challenge certificates. So this one could definitely be one to watch. Now the Shih Tzu on the table. This has its origins in China with some ancestry with the Chow Chow. With some ancestry, and it was thought to be a Laza and Pekingese cross from the Royal Palace of China. Arrogant in its expression. They're a small but sturdy dog, and the hair on the face has a distinctive what we call chrysanthemum pattern to it. This one is a dog called Alex, six and a half years old, and another overseas dog from Sweden, this one. Now, underneath that coat, there's very sturdy bone. It has a slight bow to its front legs. It's allowed to turn its feet out a little in front for it to cope with its deep chest. Strong muzzle, large, round eyes, and this tail carried high above the back. I love the word arrogant in a breed standard. I always think that says a lot, doesn't it? When it first came into the country, it was known as the Laza Lion Dog, and was first shown alongside the Lazas. They were separated in 1934. Ladies and gentlemen, your best of breed Shih Tzu, number 2184. And now we see the Tibetan Spaniel. Our best of breed Tibetan Spaniel here. There were 161 entered today, and the winner was three-year-old Nina. This was another breed that was favoured by Tibetan monks, and they were used as companions and watchdogs. Now, you couldn't actually buy one. They had to be given to you as an honoured friend. The they're a beautiful breed to live with. They're long-lived, they're highly intelligent. This lovely little padded muzzle, slightly domed skull, and this light, these ears which have a little lift to them. They're great dogs. The head should be slightly small in proportion to the body and carried proudly. Yes, and the thing, if, if it may, ha may have some Pekingese in its ancestry, but we want higher legs, more ground clearance. And it's a, a more active, sprightly dog than the Pekingese. Now, we've seen a lot of rough-coated uh, breeds in this breed, but this one is more of a silky texture, isn't it? And there's not a lot of grooming. They're e easily kept. They're great characters. Wonderful top line, perfectly level, and the tail carried high above the back. That's lovely, putting on a very good show. The breed became firmly established in the UK when a lord and lady Wakefield returned with their dogs. Our best of breed Tibetan Spaniel there. They have become increasingly popular, and the Tibetan Spaniel Association was formed in 1957. That's our best of breed, Tibetan Spaniel number 2325. Now on the table, the Tibetan Terrier. It's closely related to the Lars Apso, which we saw earlier. And when the two breeds arrived in the UK, they were classified as one breed, Lars Terriers. The two breeds were separated in 1934. And here is the Tibetan Terrier. 
This one is a breed record holder at only three and a half years old, a female called Fancy, here competing from Louisiana in the USA. A judge just going under the coat, looking at the hind quarters from the back, seeing that its hocks are strong and pointing straight ahead. S square in outline. Now, this one has won eight Best in Show awards in America. Great record. Today, it was a specialist judge, Glenn Davies, judge. They're very he's a very successful breeder in this country. And here is the winner from a big entry of 158 today. This is another breed with that distinctive double coat, so woolly underneath and then profuse on the top, but the judge has really got under there and felt the construction of the dog. Striding out well, these long strides. Our best of breed Tibetan Terrier. They were mascots and luck bringers and are never given away as it was thought that you could, you could be giving away good fortune too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your best of breed winning Tibetan Terrier, number 2422. Our final best of breed in the utility group is the Jolo It's Quintly, also known as the Mexican Hairless. This is the national breed of Korea and has some of the Spitz-like construction with those ears there. This is a two-year-old dog from Poland. So, it's a hairless dog, but it has this oily skin very elegant in its outline. Jolo was the Aztec god of deformed things, and it's deformed because, it, it, well, it's a bad word to use, deformed. It doesn't have full dentition. The hairless dogs are often lacking a few teeth, but what a very good outline. Three sizes in this breed. This is the tallest of them, then there's the medium, and this, the smaller size. This size was used for hunting originally. And they were also thought to have healing powers in Mexico, where they originated. You've got that wedge-shaped head there with the almond eye. And what are we looking for on the move with these, Frank? Uh, again, we want clean action, covering the ground well, and this one is, and it's a very nice temperament on it, striding out, very confident. So although it's called hairless, it does have the tiny little strap on the head, doesn't it? Yes, and, and sometimes a few wisps on the feet as well. Very active and sporty. That's our best of breed. Winning solo with Quinky. Our best of breed there from the import Seven. register. Seven. Our judge has taken a look at the best of breed winners in the utility group, but who will make the shortlist? Judge Dave Pellier will now take another last look at all of these fabulous best of breed winners before he makes his shortlist finalists. So let's hear a round of applause for all of our marvellous best of breed winners. They've shown their socks up in this field this evening. It's a long day for them and they've given us a marvellous spectacle. A total of 2,587 dogs judged here today. In the and now the judge going round to remind himself of what he's found on his hands-on examination. We've all looked at them from the ringside. He has the privilege of having examined them. So he'll know what he found. He's now to decide which eight he's going to have out for a second look. Eddie, that are catching your eye in the immediate lineup. Well, I, I like the Tibetan Terrier very much. I like the Jolowitz Quintley, a very impressive, and the standard poodle. So we'll see. And of course, the Akita Inu, the Japanese Akita Inu, so put on a great show. The first of our shortlisted breeds. So he's. Uh, in comes the French Bulldog Is and the, the Klein Bulldog, German Spitz and the German Akita Spitz Inu. The Very good Japanese show from that one. The Lars Apso is called forward, and the miniature Schnauzer. You'll be happy with that, Laura. I am and very happy. There's with the Manny. standard poodle brought out. Looking incredible. 
the Tibetan Spaniel and the Tibetan Terrier. And there we have our lineup for the utility group. And what a way to start. So well done to the others leaving the ring. They'll have enjoyed their experience here. A magic feeling to be in the big ring at Gross. So our judge just sending them back to the side of the ring now and will move them again before deciding on the four positions. Now he's the, the judge is looking at them moving out and back, checking on the rear movement for soundness and strength in the hocks. Looking at the straight movement coming towards him, showing off its broad chest. Now, this one has come from Birmingham, so a very short journey to compete. It is a three-year-old dog called Elton. And as I say, uh, here is the German Spitz, brisk in action, full of confidence. This one is a six-year-old dog called George here from Middlesbrough. They've won a group at, this kennel's won a group at Crufts before. Now, I think this Japanese Akita Inu really caught our eye. This is Kichi, a dog four years old from Spain. And we can see the, the reaction from the audience. This is a crowd pleaser. You get that sense, don't you, of a real show person in the ring. And deep in thought, Dave, he's uh, inscrutable in his expression. You can't tell what he's thinking. Here's the Laza Apso, multi-champion from Lithuania. This is a two and a half year old dog called Haru. Now here we have Manny, Pembroke man about town, here from Taunton with Becky and Lauren Woods. He's a former top schnauzer, 16 challenge certificates to his name. And the poodle representative, the standard, and what a show dog this is. The handler really striding out to let him have his scope to show off his stride. A really big winner, this, is Boomer, a four-year-old dog from Blackpool but competed all over the world. The first of the Tibetan breeds to make the shortlist. This is the Terrier, a three-and-a-half-year-old female called Fancy. Now, it's not glamorous, it's not flashy, but it's a beautiful quality. It's all not all about flash and dash. It's about cor correctness of breed type. Lovely Tibetan Spaniel. And again, another big winner there, the breed record holder, in fact. And our eight finalists here is the Tibetan Terrier. And here's this big winning Tibetan Terrier from America. And you can see why she wins best in shows. Lovely movement, great carriage on the move. This is a really, really strong shortlist. The boards are coming in, so our judge has decided. Well, where is he going to go? The Akita was, he knew was marvellous, the standard poodle, the Tibetan terrier. The, the boards are out. Where's the handshake going? The French Bulldog wins the utility group. The French Bulldog Rocket Man wins the group. Elton, a three-year-old dog from Birmingham, is our first finalist at Crufts Best in Show 2024. So where will Group 2 go? St striding along, it's going to be the Tibetan Spaniel. Lovely, lovely. So three-year-old Nina there from Wales. Third place goes to the standard poodle. Sorry, that was three and a half year old Fancy in second place. And for fourth spot, it's the Tibetan Terrier. So there's the Tibetan Terrier from America taking fourth place here. So we have our first finalist for Sunday evening now in the little French Bulldog, Elton, Chelm Bull Rocket Man.
absolutely lost for words. I am completely lost for words. It's just a, a dream beyond a dream come true. I just, oh, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Tell us a little bit about this dog, this, this gorgeous little Frenchie. Yeah, uh, he, he's a little bit special. So he, um, he took the breed record from his dad last year. Um, only Frenchie ever to win a best in show. And it just took us on a journey that we just never thought would be possible for this breed. And he's just, he's just done it again. <laughs> it's just, it's unbelievable. I'm honestly the words. And my dad, wherever dad is, so. <laughs> Yeah. I think they're up there. Well, Abby, congratulations. Elton, a little showman. The Frenchie takes the first group of Crufts 2024. Many congratulations to Abby and Elton. So that's a very overjoyed owner. It's a father and daughter partnership, very keen on their French Bulldogs. So what a win for them here. Gavin Robertson from the Crufts Committee to escort Mrs. Maria Harding of the Pringham Bulldogs and French Bulldogs to present the prize through to the winner this evening. And that's the Mar French Bulldog. Mar Maria ha Harding presenting the trophy. She is a Bulldog breeder and a French Bulldog two breeder. She'll be two. very happy with that success. And then let's Spaniel. give you the other places because equally as impressive, we have our Tibetan Spaniel, Nina, in second place here from Wales. And group three third the place standard went poodle. to the standard poodle boomer here from blackpool and then fourth to fancy the tibetan, to the tibetan terrier, terrier across from louisiana and i think very shortly they'll do their lap of honor okay ladies and gentlemen one more time put your hands together for the group winners from the utility group leading off with the french Bull